Good afternoon, Happy Valley, and welcome back to another edition of the Penn State 365 podcast, uh, sponsored by PennState.Rivals.com, a.k.a. Happy Valley Insider. Joined today by our co-host, as always, Dylan Callahan Crawley. Dylan, the white smoke is coming out of State College today as Penn State has their offensive coordinator finally. It's a little less than a month, I think it was, since Mike Yersich got fired. But uh, uh, yeah, um, November like 11, that, right? November twelfth, November twelfth is when Yersich got fired one day after a Michigan game. So uh, yeah, well, let's say yeah. the thirtieth, about nineteen days. Yeah, so so not even uh, not even three weeks, and now yeah. Penn State yeah. has their offensive coordinator as they are stealing Kansas offensive coordinator Andy Koltelnicki. Yeah. Um, Andy has just to give a quick background before uh, you go more in depth on it because I know you know more about him than I do, but Andy is a Minnesota native. Um, yeah. But when I uh, went to school at Wisconsin River Falls, which is one of their uh, satellite campuses for the University of Wisconsin, um, has coached at kind of every level pretty much at his alma mater, at uh, Mary College, or it might be Mary University, University of Mary, actually. I'm sorry. That's a D2 level school, Wisconsin Whitewater, Buffalo, and then most recently Kansas, who he's turned into kind of quite the power in the Big 12. Um, what right. else can you tell me about him? Yeah, I mean, uh, first, uh, subscribers to Happy Valley Insider can go over and read a full kind of deep dive I took into the uh, Andy Coltonicki offense. And uh, the, the words I'm going to use to describe this are create, creative and evolution because there is a constant flow of creativity in this offense and there's a constant evolution of this offense. It is It is not an offense that... Many have seen in college football. Um, in a portion of the story, I, I reference a report uh, from the Topeka Capital Journal when uh, one Kansas wide receiver said, uh, I, I've never seen anything like it before, and I still haven't uh, seen anything like it either. Um, and, and that's really the best way to describe this mm-hmm. offense. Is it, the, there is no one – I mean, it – in its essence, it's based around a, being a pro-style, spread-style offense. But also, it's almost as if you're playing NCAA 14 or Madden, creating a custom playbook and throwing in all your favorite different formations, plays, and all that. At Kansas, they ran pro-style, they ran spread, they ran triple option. He's going to curtail his offense to the capabilities and the strengths of his personnel. And he's done that everywhere he's gone. Uh, Mm-hmm. At Buffalo, they were a very run-heavy team, especially when it came to zone running. Uh, and when they he went to Kansas, they adopted more of a gap-based offensive game plan in the in the run game. They uh, added the triple option because of Jalen Daniels and his abilities. Um, and even mm-hmm. beyond Jalen Daniels, they used the triple option. I don't think Penn State's going to be running the triple option a ton going forward, especially with you know Drew Drew's skill set not being a triple option skill set, but this is a play call that is going to curtail his offense to his quarterback and to his playmakers. And uh, Penn State fans were complaining that there was no creativity in the Mike Yersich offense this year, which I think we all agree with. That's never going to be a shortage in the Andy Colts, Nikki offense. And if it is, then we know who we can start pointing fingers to, and that that would be James Franklin. But mm-hmm. based off everything we've seen out of Andy Coltonicki, whether it's at Buffalo, at Kansas, or beyond, or before that at Wisconsin Widewater, it, it's nonstop flow of creativity and nonstop flow of evolution. A lot of pre-snap motion, a lot of uh, looking crane mismatches. That that is the key here. He is going to look to create a mismatch on almost every single play. For uh, from from the line of scrimmage, and mm-hmm. uh, he's done a fantastic job of that. His last two stops, and now he's going to have talent at a level that he's never had before, and that should be really exciting for Penn State fans. And I think that's a big reason that Andy Kultanicki decided to leave his longtime mentor in Lance Leipold to come to Happy Valley and become the next offensive coordinator of the Nittany Lions. Yeah. So a couple couple takeaways, just honestly, just looking straight at his resume and everything. Number one, uh, he somehow managed to get Kansas football off the ground. So that is impressive in its own right. Um, I know year one for him was a little tricky. They only averaged 20 points per game, but then year two, 35, and year three, 34 points per game. That's top 20 in the country and then top 30 in the country in both years for Kansas football, who is like 
I don't know, bottom of the barrel power vibe, yeah. pretty much power four, right. I don't call it. Um, for the most part, at least in this our generation, for so right. to speak, actually for probably ever until recent. But uh, yeah, uh, that was one thing that really caught my eye. And then number two, if he's doing that with Kansas level players, what can he do with Penn State level players? We're talking not yeah. just one or two, or maybe even. I'm I probably exaggerating a little bit. Kansas probably has, I would assume, six to seven four stars on that on that team in general. Yeah, that's talking. That's probably both offense and defense. Penn State is just littered with talent. So I'm sure. curious what he could do with a talented room and a talented offense. And and like you said, he's going to cater it based on the players he has. So this might argue. I shouldn't say might. It, it probably is the most talented quarterback he's ever going to have in his sure. time as a coach in Drew Allar. So yeah, we'll see and- what he could do. And the other thing, I'll go back to his offenses. Um, so there's a really good article on The Athletic from Matt, Max Olson uh, that when he sat down mm-hmm. with Colton Nicky and talking about how, you know, uh, the offense is run. And the comparison that they used was um, the Hoberman sphere, which I don't know how many people know what that is based off of. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's one of those uh, – you remember those, it's not really a ball, but it's one of those toys that has like a bu- 30, 40 little spikes coming out of it, and you can pull mm-hmm. it apart, and it goes back in and out together. That's yeah. how they describe the offense, it basically, is they're mm-hmm. they're pulling it apart, every little piece of it. And it's, mm-hmm. it's all about making the defense constantly think about what the offense is doing, constantly trying mm-hmm. to react, and again, you know, those mismatches, trying to get defenders out of position. And it's all about making the defense react to you and not react to the offense. Uh, th- their plan is to never be out of – to get never get played out of their game plan because their mm-hmm. game plan really beca- is <clears throat> has many different evolutions to it. According to the – Ports, uh, that one and other ones, his play sheets are extensively long. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it, he has an answer for almost any situation, and it's it, it's not like they they they're gonna just pull things out of the hat. Everything Penn State does going forward is gonna be heavily reversed. It's gonna be heavily scrutinized. They're gonna think about it uh, deeply in terms of analytics, this and that. They're always mm-hmm. gonna have an answer, and that. A lot of offense coordinators say they do that. A lot of offense coordinators say they curtail to their talent. Very few do it successfully to the degree that Andy Kultanicki has during his career so far. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at this year's uh, schedule for Kansas, too. Um, on top of them averaging 30, what would I say, 34 points per game this year? Yeah. Um, they did defeat a, a pesky Illinois team, 34-23 early season, which is always interesting. He also did it with uh, did most of the season working back and forth between quarterbacks because one yeah. guy got hurt and or actually Bean started the season. Then Daniels took over for the next three games. Then Bean took over for the next one, two, three, four, five games. Then he got hurt, and then Ballard took over for two games. And then Bean came back last week to defeat a very good Cincinnati team. On top of that, they also their only losses this year were to Texas, who's in the Big Twelve Championship, Oklahoma State, who's in the Big Twelve Championship. Um, Texas Tech, who uh, they lost by three, and Kansas State, who's ranked number 21 right now. And they did defeat number six, Oklahoma, who's been pretty good this year, minus a, a game or two. Yeah. Yeah, the, it's it's a really impressive offense, and they, they've they shown the ability to have success against defenses of all levels at both Buffalo and Kansas. Um, mm-hmm. Penn, I believe Buffalo actually outgained Penn State a couple of years ago when Colton McKee and uh, Leipold and the Buffaloes came to Happy Valley. Penn State won the game mm-hmm. big, but uh, I believe Buffalo was able to garner more yards in that game. But, I mean, you look at some of the other key stats here. Now, this is an offense that isn't going to throw a ball a ton. Uh, they only had 283 passing attempts last year, which ranked uh, bottom 15, 20 in the country. But uh, they were able to rack up. 2,672 passing yards, despite mm-hmm. that lack of passing, which ranked about 70th in the nation. So top 50% of the nation, despite being in the top, the bottom 5% when it comes to passing attempts. They mm-hmm. averaged 9.4 yards per passing attempt. They averaged 5.51 rushing yards. I mean, 
everywhere you look is it, th- this offense has been incredibly impressive. It's explosive. It's efficient. Uh, th- this is a home run hire for James Franklin. Uh, I, and I think this very well could be the best hire he's made yet as a, as a Penn State head coach. And that's saying something because uh, the defensive coordinator he has is pretty damn good. Yeah, yeah, Manny Diaz is uh, very notable, and that's why he's starting to get talked about with uh, other jobs at the moment. Right. But um, Colton Necky did end up facing uh, against Penn State actually twice in his career, I'm looking at. Um, back yep. in, what is this, 20, 2019, obviously, they like you said, they they did outgain. Uh, where is this actually? I just found it. Was it 2019? Yeah, 2019, they, yep. they did end up outgaining um, Penn State by – a little bit, but not a lot. Um, more yeah. rushing yards and pretty similar passing numbers as uh, their quarterback at 245 and then Sean Clifford at 279. Mm-hmm. Um, but they had 429 total yards compared to Penn State's 357. And that's that's against a pretty pretty solid defense back then, too. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, it's not like they were facing any shabby, uh, you know. They were facing some pretty damn good Penn State defenses <laughs> there, and, and they were really impressive. I, I remember those games quite well. and uh, Yeah, I mean – I, I, I would just be repeating myself at this point, but this mm. he is one of the best offensive minds in all of college football. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And he's done that with good but not elite talent. Jalen Daniels is a damn good quarterback, <laughs> don't get me wrong. But like you said, there's he has not worked with a quarterback that has the level of ability that Drew has, where Drew has potential to be a number one overall draft pick, mm-hmm. and I think with a Colts and Nikki, I, the ceiling for Drew is sky high. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just want to keep picking apart some of his old games. Um, his yeah. first year against Penn State, his first year at Buffalo was against. He took on Penn State and Christian Hackenberg, Saquon Barkley, God win that yep. team. Um, he still managed to have a quarterback in year one put up two hundred and five yards. The game was only ten nothing at. At half, mind you, but he didn't really put up many points. He only scored 14 as Penn State ended up winning 27-14. But yeah. still he almost had a 100-yard rusher, 200-yard passer, an 80-yard receiver. Like It still was a pretty decent offense for year one with guys that he didn't recruit, guys that he didn't know at all against, again, a good Penn State team. Well, yep. good is loosely that year. A little sketch that year. But, yeah, but no, they, it, no, they ended up finishing. What, what did they end up finishing that year, 20? Uh, which 15. year was that? Sorry, 2019? 2015. 2015, they were 7 and 6. It was after that rough start to Temple, I think it was, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Seven, and, 7 and 5, 7 and 6 that year. Yeah. So I shouldn't say great, but they still had a good Penn State team and a good Penn State defense. So, I mean. Yeah, and that was still a sanction ridden riddled team as well. Then you go a couple years down the line, and he takes on a Rutgers team that obviously wasn't the best in. Uh, I don't even know when this is, 2019, I think it was, 2018. Yeah. Um, and he puts up 42 on a Big Ten defense. Right, right. I know, again, using the term loosely because it's Rutgers and Big Ten defense, but and it was Chris Ash who's awful, like yeah. one of the worst yeah. power five coaches sure. ever. But uh, still, he, and he had a quarterback in Tyree Jackson who's in the NFL still as a, as a tight end, mind you, but. He managed yeah. to have that guy throw for 250 plus multiple games. <laughs> yeah, he wherever he's gone, quarterbacks have succeeded really Flourished. well. I mean, yeah. uh, I'm forgetting Bean's first name out there in Kansas. Is it Jason? Jason Bean? Um, Either way, Bean yeah. is a good quarterback, but he is not nearly Jason. the level of Jalen Daniels. And mm-hmm. the fact that he, he was able to still put up, you know, 33 points per game this year. A total of over five thousand total yards of offense, you know, three thousand passing yards. Jason, Jason Bean. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, and I think that's what has to be excited for Penn State is who knows how long he's here. If, if Colton Nicky comes out next year, Penn State's offense is amongst the best in the country. He very well could have a head coaching job this time next year. Oh yeah, but as long as he is with Happy Valley in Happy Valley, um, the. Penn State fans should be really excited about the potential of the quarterback room, and what because yeah. because like I said, he's just going to curtail it to whatever the strengths are, and no matter where he's been, it he's done that successfully. Mm-hmm. The first year at Kansas wasn't great, but I mean that wasn't much Kansas. count on that team, and these last two years you've seen that step up. Now they're at Penn State; they're not going. 
going to have to, you know, revamp 95% of the roster to get caught up. Um, I'll be interested to see with Drew what, what type of, what, what he runs more, what he doesn't run. Uh, the other thing to note is, you know, Penn State historically under James Franklin has been a zone running team. They've never <clears throat> dipped below 51% of the running, rushing attack being zone runs. Uh, Colton Nicky was heavy zone at Buffalo and then changed to more of a gap oriented scheme with Kansas. So are we going to see a flip back to the Buffalo days for Colton Nicky? Uh, or are we going to see more gap? I mean, it's going to be very interesting to see what changes are made. I, I think Penn State's personnel fits Colton Nicky really well. I'm just mm-hmm. intrigued by, I guess, what changes, what doesn't change, and just how he will curtail it. The other thing to note here is this is a guy who's going to attack the middle of the field a ton in the passing game, which is what Penn State did a ton as well this season, especially with Drew. Um, mm-hmm. Drew had great success in the middle of the field this year. Um, looking at the numbers, um, Drew was 106 for 151 this year, average 9.4 yards per attempt. Um, what J- Jason Bean wasn't the best passer in the middle of the field, but if you look at Jalen Daniels, comparable to uh, Drew, 80 for 114, 1,300 yards, 11 point yards, 11.4 yards per attempt the last two seasons in between the numbers. Uh, th- that's where I think it's really interesting. I mean, it's all about getting those guys wide open in the middle of the field with for Colton Icke, with a lot of pre-snap motion, splits, all that type of stuff. And uh, I, I think just when you combine getting guys open with the arm town of Drew, it, Penn State's offense could easily be a top five scoring offense in the country. I mean, they were close to it this year, and it was – one of the most unimaginable offenses you could imagine. So, yeah. I mean, I, I I just think the sky is really, really high for Penn State next season yeah. with Colton Nicky. And, and the cool thing about that in, uh, is that this you can sell that to portal guys easily now. And portal wide yes. receivers are going to see this and be like, oh, shit, they just hired the guy who was running that crazy offense over at Kansas that was, like, just putting up numbers. Yeah, if they and I can go to play at a good school like Penn State, so you have the prestige, you have the legacy, the history, whatever. Then you have the offensive mind. Now that's going to call this. You have the quarterback that you could sell, and the best part is, is you kind of have a wide open wide receiver room that a guy can come in right now and be wide receiver one. A guy can come in right now and be wide receiver two. A guy could yeah. arguably be wide receiver three, depending on who returns, who doesn't, blah blah blah. But they they could sell that easily. So you have playing time, a uh, big name school. Big name opponents, big name conference, and you get to prove and you can prove yourself against the best and be wide receiver one immediately in a fast paced, fun offense. Yep, absolutely. And I, I mean, you put it really well. Penn State needs wide receivers right now. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, him, him coming aboard is going to really, really open up possibilities for Penn State to mm-hmm. bring in some of these more explosive wide receivers in the transfer portal, even if the NIL may not be there. Which yeah is still going to be a major factor. Of course, the idea of playing a Coltonicky offense, uh, playing at a high level like Penn State, where mm-hmm. you're going to be competing for a college football playoff uh, appearance next season, is yeah. has that to too. Be, I didn't even mention yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> you're playing. You're in a highly explosive. You're playing mm-hmm. with a. Ho- you're playing for an offense coordinator who has shown a history of being highly explosive both on the ground and pass. You're playing with one of the most talented quarterbacks in the country. Uh, mm-hmm. The numbers may not say that right now, but I mean, 23 touchdowns, to one interception this year. Um, the arm town is there. Uh, you're playing for a top 10 to 12 college football program, a, a program competing for a college football playoff uh, appearance, a program that will be competing in one of the top two premier conferences in all of college football next year. It's this. It makes Penn State a really, really – can't think of the word now. Um, An attractive situation. Attractive situation for <laughs> yeah. wide receivers uh, in the transfer portal, for sure. Yeah, and um, I've been kind of looking to see if there's any actual uh, wide receiver commits, and they have no wide receiver commits in Kansas. So I thought maybe it, well, they could get one to flip or something, but uh, there's not one single uh, wide receiver commit for Kansas so far this uh, this cycle. So 
Yep, and quiet for it, them at that position. It makes you wonder if he was already kind of looking at the portal for wide receivers, and now we yep. can yep. literally yep. dive a little deeper into that portal. And and there's one name I do want to mention just because he got an offer today. Yep. Uh, Jamori Macklin um, out of North Texas. He's a yes. former Missouri wide receiver. Yep. Transferred to North Texas, I think, before like, he even did anything at Missouri. Uh, yeah, he, I don't think he played at Missouri. He played two years at <clears throat> North Texas, recorded in a 1,000-yard season this year. Mm-hmm. Enters the portal as a graduate transfer, so will be eligible right away. Two years of eligibility remaining. Mm-hmm. Uh, has picked up a ton of offers. Uh, I've seen South Carolina, Kentucky, Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was one more in there. Um uh, but yeah, Colorado big, just offered, I think. Yeah, there, there's been quite a few offers. Got to be highly valued in the transfer portal, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, this is. Uh, you would think this hire makes it a lot even more attractive, and I would assume that he probably knew who the offense coordinator was going to be when he made this hire. Uh, talk about outside voices here. Bill Connolly over at ESPN uh, just tweeted out that uh uh, granted, I thought Yersich was a killer hire too, which I all think I think we all did. Um, mm-hmm. But he says, "So what do I know?" But says the Colts <laughs> Nikki hire for Penn State is a killer hire. Uh, this is a hire that was so far on Twitter, unsurprisingly, is being very well received by oh, yeah. college football media throughout the country. Um, so, so I, it, it's really. It'll be really intriguing to see what type of impact it has on the recruiting show beyond the transfer portal as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he is known as a pretty decent recruiter. And uh, going back to Macklin real quick, for people that don't know, Macklin is the younger cousin of Jeremy Macklin, former yep. Eagles wide receiver, who I'm sure you pretty you know pretty well. Yep, go birds. Uh, no. yeah. He uh, he also had some crazy numbers too. Like people are going to say North Texas thousand yards. Who the hell cares? My my math was at is always like if it's at G five, you kind of divide it like almost in half. And if I can get half of that production at the Power Five level, I'll be pretty content. And you could you could say more than half too. You could say like sixty percent. But he's done it against like he had one hundred and sixty three yards against Temple this year, one hundred and twenty two against Cal, one hundred and uh, or seventy seventy one versus Tulane, who's ranked and might yep. be the future opponent of Penn State in we'll probably know in like three or four days. Um, like these are these are good numbers. These are really good numbers. One hundred eighteen versus UAB. Like it's not like they're nobody nobodies, but he they're. G5. So I do think if you have to take some numbers off that thousand yards, but if you can get him, that's a good start. Um, yeah. I mean, we saw gonna... Mitchell Tinsley uh, come from a similar yeah. situation in Western Kentucky. He still had success at Penn State. A lot of people may be scared <laughs> of, of like a Dante Cephas scenario. Dante Cephas, you know, incredibly explosive at Kent State, comes to Penn State, has been put together in year one. Um, mm-hmm. Now, you, when you talk about uh, superb athleticism in Dante Cephas, Pair that with a creative play car like uh, Andy Coltonicki. That's that, that's somebody now that I really think could have a huge, huge year uh, to for Penn State. Um, and you have to wonder how this changes Penn, uh, maybe some decision making for guys like a Keandre Lambert Smith, like a Dante Cephas, or even some of those tight ends, uh, uh, Theo Johnson and Tyler yeah, Warren, both could go pro this year if they wanted to. Yeah, and he he loves using his tight ends from what I've I've read in the past. Yes. Um, so that's huge for Penn State, who's quietly slowly turning into tight end you a little bit. Kind of, yeah. you, you can argue it. Um, but anyway, for the sure, other thing, sure. the other thing I wanted to mention is uh, we have access to Sports Source Analytics, and um, they sent me this actually ten minutes ago, and they're going to tweet it out momentarily. But uh, among Power Five teams over the last two years, I'm just going to read off their stats for Colton Nicky's offenses. 12th yep. in most points per possession, Penn State was 16. 10th in per- percentage of possession scoring a touchdown, Penn State was 15th. 7th in yards per play, Penn State was 30th. 4th in yards per rush, Penn State was 26th. 6th in yards per pass attempt, Penn State was 39th. Yep. Second highest percentage of big pa- pass plays, which we all know we want to see big pass plays finally. Um, Penn State was 42nd. Um, other notable numbers, 4th highest third down conversions. Uh, percentage Penn State was 38th fifth highest percentage of great plays which means 25 plus or a touchdown Penn State was 20th like and he did this keep in mind like I said before it with Kansas which had the sixth lowest talent ranked offense or ranked yeah talent ranked offense among all power five teams 
that low of a team, and now he's going to get Penn State, which is, I don't even know where they're at, but they're up there, probably top 15, something like that in terms of talent. Yeah. Maybe higher, yeah, you can argue, but. Yeah, no, it's the, that, and that's the big South point, that he's at Kansas and Buffalo has had tremendous success with lesser talent. Exactly. And now he's coming to a place that recruits mm-hmm. top 10, top 15 classes in the country routinely. Um, I, it's, I, I just keep seeing great, great things on Twitter, uh, or, or people saying great, great things on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the latest ones was from, um, uh, Orlovsky over at, um, ESPN, ESPN saying, um, Fantastic hire for Penn State at OC to get Andy Colton Nicky, super creative, open box mm-hmm. mindset, play designer, and play caller. Uh, this, this is the, and I would say Penn, James Franklin saw Penn State's offense this year waste a national championship level defense, waste mm-hmm. Penn State's potential to get to a college football playoff this year. And with the Big Ten expanding, you bringing in some of the best offensive minds in football, Lincoln Riley. Kalen DeBoer, Penn State couldn't take a step any further of a step back offensively going forward, especially when you already consider you have Ryan Day at Ohio State. Ohio State may not have been the Ohio State that we've known this year, but they're not they're not going to be, you know, like this forever. They're going to take step back up. Michigan continues to do what Michigan does very successfully. It, they yeah, don't do anything. They don't do anything, you know, super creative. They just are really damn ball. good at what they do. Four, 40 times a game. Yeah. And he, he might not even be there next year. So Right. But but you still look at, you know, you look at Ryan Day, you look at Kalen DeBoer, you look at um, Lincoln Riley, uh, Chip Kelly at UCLA, uh, mm-hmm. and then I'm playing on who Oregon's OC is. But either way, um, you're looking at really four good offenses coming to the Big Ten next year. And Penn State needed to keep up with the Joneses offensively. And – I would say with this hire, they're not only just keeping up with the Joneses, they're now, they could be leading the pack in terms of having the best offensive mind in the Big Ten, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I think that's... Because I, uh, I think Colton Nicky is arguably one of the top five offensive minds in all of college football. Um, yeah. And I, I think it's also worth noting, this is a guy who turned down jobs from Notre Dame and elsewhere last year to be their offense coordinator, and it's and, and he chose to come to Penn State this year. Uh, I, I think that says a lot about what he sees in this Penn State opportunity um, as well. And I, I, I think it's also worth knowing this is a guy who was getting paid a million dollars by Kansas uh, to be the offense coordinator this year. Uh, mm-hmm. He probably is getting paid close to $1.72 million and is one of the highest paid <clears throat> coordinators in all of college football now following Easily. this uh, hire. And, and I think you look at Manny Diaz, uh, if Manny Diaz sticks around, he's being interviewed by Duke, uh, He's for their head coach vacancy. Big, big um, if Manny Diaz stays around, he's also probably getting paid closer to that $2 million mark. Penn State has probably, when you look at head coach and coordinators, one of the top five, one of the most expensive head coach and coordinator uh, groups in the country now. That's why it's so important that you got to gotta get this right this time. So Right, right. Um, he needed to, and he needed to hit a home run on this hire, and he hit a home run. He did. Yeah. I give him credit. Um, also, anyway, worth noting, uh, also worth noting, we put Andy Koltanicki on our initial hot board. Um, so, just saying. Big brain play. Uh, um, anyway, I, that's all I really got. Um, this is just kind of more of an instant reaction type thing. And we're going to try yeah. to do more of these in the future when it comes to recruiting and stuff like that. And, and breaking news, team news, et cetera, all that stuff. But uh, Dylan, any final thoughts before uh, before we sign off? I know you kind of just um, on uh, your Koltanicki rant already. Yeah, yeah. I I love this hire for Penn State. I really do. I think this is the best hire they could have made. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I thought that coming in this search. And after, I, I mean, last night we had an idea this was happening. So I sat down at like yeah. midnight last night and cranked out that deep dive article. I didn't go to bed until 4.30. Um, That's right. After doing all that last night, I I am very much convinced that this was the best hire Penn State could have made. And I think the potential with Colton Nicky is, like I said, sky high. 
Mm -hmm. You say home run, I say potential grand slam right there. Yeah. Um, huge, yeah. huge hire for Penn State. Um, we'll have plenty more on that on the boards, on the Lions Den Forum. Um, you already have an article up doing, like you said, a deep dive of his offense. Yep. Um, we'll, we'll have more. Have recruit more... reactions uh, oh, as yeah, they come we'll in. We'll have that shortly. Um, we're going to have a lot more than that, too. Um, scheduling something to uh, – I don't want to reveal too much because I don't like to give away our, our secrets here. Um, but we will have someone talking Colton Nicky's offense a little more in depth in the future, more scheme-wise and stuff like that. And and uh, so, yeah, just stay tuned. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below on the YouTube channel if you're listening on there. If not, if you're on one of their podcasting apps, uh, give us a five-star review. It helps us grow the pod, get it, to, get it out to other Nittany Nation guys, girls, sorry, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, for me and Dylan, that's another episode of the Penn State 365 podcast signing off.